Greetings, friends. Reverend Stephen here, speaking this week from our sanctuary at St. Matthew Wesley United Church. Yes, it's cold in here, but still beautiful. I'm optimistic that it won't be much longer until we're together here. Until that day, we will soldier on in our isolation, uh, looking forward to the time when we're back together physically. Some folks are, like Norm and I, able to work a bit from home. Others are looking after children and grandchildren and will likely be on that particular duty until September, it's beginning to look like. Many are finding time passing slowly, reading, taking walks, and watching TV. We're spending some time with Netflix also, watching new shows and movies, but also revisiting some old favorites. Do you remember All Creatures Great and Small? The series was based on the books by English veterinarian James Harriet. They were recollections of his years as a vet in the Yorkshire Dales in the north of England. We very much enjoyed those back in the day and continue to enjoy them. Norma tells me that a new version is in the works, so there's something to look forward to. As it happens, my roots are in Yorkshire. One of my ancestors, one of my grandfathers, came to North America from Yorkshire in 1605. He is listed in the uh, immigration records as probably a clergyman. One of the many insights offered in All Creatures Great and Small is how physically demanding working as a vet can be. Mr. Harriet had his share of dogs and cats and birds and other small animals to look after, but mainly his patients were large animals, horses, cows, sheep, goats, and so on. Springtime could be a real trial as it is birthing season. The vet needed to be there so births could go well. A healthy animal was very much tied to the livelihood of people in Yorkshire back in the day. I think of that physical and mental challenge on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Good Shepherd Sunday in the lectionary after the 23rd Psalm, which is read on this day, and also the reading from John where Jesus describes himself as a shepherd for his people and as a gate into the fold of a secure life. Now we can all recall sentimental pictures of Jesus as the Good Shepherd we saw when we were children. It was a very uh, shining and tidy Jesus in a summer setting, holding a young lamb with happy children all around him. It made us feel good and uh, continues to be a comfort to young people. But is it really a portrayal of the shepherd that Jesus had in mind? The shepherds that he knew, the shepherds in the fields at Christmas time, the shepherds who might have come to his father's carpentry shop for staffs or fence boards were not sentimental or particularly gentle guys. Raising sheep or any animal, guarding them from wild animals and thieves on rough hillsides, getting them into the sheep pens, going to market and so on, was rough work and not much respected in wider society. But the folks who got food and clothing from the sheep were grateful. And of course, the sheep were as grateful as sheep could be. The notion of caring for sheep might have been more powerful in ancient times than now, but we can still relate to the dedication and commitment such work represented. And we can appreciate Jesus' fervent wish that his followers would understand his relationship with them and their relationship to others demanded this same level of dedication. In the weeks following Easter Sunday, we can take the same comfort and inspiration from the Good Shepherd model as the first Christians did. John tells us that we can lean on the promise that our Savior and the Holy Spirit comfort and protect us, whether we are threatened internally by our own inclination to selfish pursuits or externally by forces like the current pandemic, where the vastly changed world makes us examine the very foundational beliefs and systems of our modern world. Through whatever may come, 
Jesus is our strength and shield. He is able to keep us safe in the wider world, and when we need it, he is the gate into a safer and more secure place where we may need to retreat from time to time. Further, friends, Christ has promised that the strength he gives us is sufficient not only to our own situation, but to the needs of others that we may encounter. What an inspirational picture Luke records in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, where he tells us the first believers lived communally, sharing and caring for each other as this sacrificial and supportive community grew daily in strength and in numbers. That same spirit moves among us still as we strive to be shepherds to each other and the wider world. Under the extraordinary circumstances that world events have placed us, we are striving to find the ways and means to care for each other. That effort will need to continue, we know, for weeks, if not months to come. We cannot be blamed if from time to time we are fearful of the future and unsure whether we are up to the tasks ahead. It's a blessing then to recall the Good Shepherd is near, protecting us, refreshing us, giving us the daily spiritual bread that strengthens in the peace that passes understanding. May our Shepherd keep us individually and as a community safe in his care. May we continue to care for each other. Let's bow together in prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you are our shepherd, that you care for us, that you provide strength in the wider world and a sanctuary when we need to come into your presence in the sheepfold, in the garden, or wherever we may find you. Bless us now in the week ahead. Keep our community strong by the presence of your Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus' dear name. Amen. Goodbye for now, friends. We will be together soon, and uh, I'm as near as the phone or an email. Let me know how you're doing. We're well at home and looking forward to warmer days that we can spend together.